Thank you for joining me today for a few moments in God's Word. We're going to be looking at the passage in Daniel chapter 6, verse 18 through 24. And we're going to be talking about decisions, making decisions. Sometimes it's a very difficult thing to do, to make decisions. And often we don't know the end result of our decisions when we make them. We have hopes and expectations, desires and wishes. Often when we are walking with God, we have uh, assurances because of what God's word declares and says. And it's a wonderful thing to have a partnership and a relationship with our Heavenly Father through His Word and His Son and through the Holy Spirit that when we make decisions, we are not making them blind. Uh, we are not making them ignorant. Uh, we are making them led by the Spirit and uh, confidence in the Word of God and that God is with us. Romans 8.28 says, we can be confident that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. But just take a moment with me today and let's read the passage. Daniel chapter 6, verse 18 through 24. Then the king went into his palace, passed the night fasting, neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king rose very early in the morning and went in haste into the den of lions. When he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth and they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no matter of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. The king commanded that they brought those men which had accused Daniel, cast them into the lion's den, them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, or ever they came to the bottom of the den. It's quite a story, isn't it? Uh, says the uh, the situation became so dire because people were finding fault with a man who had no fault. Sounds much like the day that we're living in, where our world has turned to believe in lies and deceptive methods of living and working. Uh, it is a very dark time in our world, but we have the Lord. And those of us who trust in God will be there for us. And he will see us through these dark times that we're living in. People make decisions every day. I read a survey according to Cornell University. Uh, we apparently make about 35,000 uh, remotely conscious decisions every day. <laughs> I had no idea. 35,000 remotely conscious decisions every day. If a person lives to the age of 70, 35,000 decisions every day for 70 years, we will have made 945 billion decisions. <laughs> no wonder we're tired. <laughs> but let's just look at it honestly. Some decisions are far more important than others. And uh, deciding what church you may attend 
is much more important than what kind of dressing you're going to put on your salad. And uh, I mean, it just the decisions seem to be endless. Uh, every decision is just that. It is a decision. Sometimes we make them without even thinking about it, uh, but it is a decision. And decisions, it's like a choice. Uh, uh, Alicia Jolie, many years ago, uh, gave a teaching on uh, every choice is a seed, and every seed bears fruit. It's quite an extraordinary thought, isn't it? There's a consequence to our decisions. To make a decision to accept Christ as your Savior results in eternal salvation. I believe that to be the most significant decision a human being can make, and that is to have God, consciousness of Him, and come to a point where you decide to accept Him as God and Christ His Son as your Savior, and to, to follow Him. There is no greater decision that will have any greater comp, uh, impact upon your life than choosing to follow, accept and to follow Christ. I want to talk to you about not the first decision that we just mentioned, accepting Christ, but the second decision. What would you think would be the second most important decision after accepting Jesus as your personal Savior? What would be the next most important decision that you could make in life? We look at this passage today that we've read in Daniel 6, and we see that the decision uh, that Daniel had made early on, first not only to believe in God, but to follow God, I believe is the second most important decision that a person can make. And we're going to look back at that verse in verse 23, that Daniel believed in his God, and Daniel had made the correct first decision to believe in God, but he also made the second most important decision is to act on his belief and to follow God, to live for God. Uh, King Darius was faced with a very important decision uh, uh, when choose to worship his gods rather than the God of Daniel. And he listened to people who were much like people today, trying to find fault with people of faith and people who believe in Jesus Christ as a personal savior and believe in the gifts and the works of the Holy Spirit are under great judgment in our world today. But assuming today that those are, who are here have made a decision for Christ in their life already, Let's talk about the second most important decision. As a believer, the second most important thing you can decide to do is how you're going to serve God. To what extent? To what level of service? To what degree are you going to commit to not just believe in God, but to act on your belief? Scripture teaches us that we should let the light of our faith so shine that men would see Christ within us, that we are to be a light in this dark world. If you look at Daniel 6.20, when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions. So he knows Daniel, believes in his God. He addresses him as Daniel, servant of the living God. And then he makes this statement, whom you serve continually. It's quite a statement, isn't it? What a testimony that here the king takes notice of Daniel he knows that Daniel believes in Jehovah God. He knows that Daniel is a servant of his God. 
and he knows and acknowledges that he serves him continually. Oh, that we would have that testimony. Amen. King Darius tells us that Daniel served God continuously. He's right about Daniel serving God continuously. Uh, if you read about Daniel, it says that he prayed three times a day, even in the face of being imprisoned and put to death. He continued to pray and to witness that he had faith in God. But what does God require of you? What does he require of you and I as a standard of service? How are we to measure and divine uh, who we are in God and what it is God wants each of us to do? Samuel, <clears throat> the great high priest, addresses the people in Israel in 1 Samuel 12, and he tells them the service that God expects from his people. Listen to 12.24 of 1 Samuel. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart, for consider what great things he has done for you. So let's listen to that again. Serve him in truth with all your heart. Fear the Lord, serve him with truth, with all your heart. And he told the people that the standard was to serve God continually with a full heart, uh, not half-heartedly, not just a person that once in a while maybe thinks of the Lord and does something uh, in his name or uh, as a testimony, but with your whole heart continuously with every part of your being that you have God in the forefront of uh, the decisions that you make and how you live your life, your conversation, your conduct, your relationships, your involvement, your responses, all those things are a part of the testimony that you not only have accepted Jesus as a personal Savior and believe in God, but you have a commitment to follow him continually with all your heart. Daniel chose to serve God to the level that God expects his people to, according to 1 Samuel 12, 24. If we look at Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. So the Apostle Paul, New Testament perspective of what is uh, appropriate level of commitment. Listen to it again. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. So the standard for the Old Testament 1 Samuel 12, 24, New Testament, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, the prophet uh, Samuel uh, here and the apostle Paul are saying that it is to be all of our heart continuously, steadfastly, without moving away from our faith and commitment to the Lord. And here's the problem. If you choose the wrong second major decision in your life is going to influence every other decision that you make. Think about that a moment. If you fail to know God and know Jesus as a personal Savior, you're lost. Everything that you do, everything you're involved in will come to naught and have no value throughout this life and eternity. You will spend eternity without God. We were born that way, Scripture says. Born in sin, shaped in iniquity, without hope and without God. If you don't accept Christ, you have no hope. So your first decision is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. The second decision is what are you going to do about that faith? What are you going to do about knowing what the Word of God says, knowing that we are called to 
wholeheartedly follow, pursue, live, witness, testify about God. And again, I want to say that if you don't make the first decision, you have no hope, have no life. You face judgment and damnation eternally. If you accept Christ and you do not do anything with that faith and relationship, every other decision you make is going to be based on less than a commitment to God. You can't just have a faith and a relationship through religion and expect there to be any fullness of joy, any peace, any, uh, any help of the Lord, any witness in your life. If you, if you really don't have a relationship personally with the Lord that motivates you to live for him and to witness for him, uh, every other thing you do is going to be vain and empty even though you may have a religious uh, faith uh, and, and confidence, you have to have a relationship that transforms how you think, how you feel, the choices you make, the relationships that you develop. All those decisions that are made must be made based upon your relationship with God. Uh, let me tell you what a life looks like that is chosen to serve God continually. And that is the testimony of Daniel. And it wasn't just his commitment and his personal testimony. It was a witness so strong that the king of a great nation could see the commitment that he was a servant of God serve God continually. That is something that is envious. <laughs> we should really want that type of relationship that people know that we love God, fear God, serve God, not just once in a while, but continually. Think about the times that God spoke to Daniel. God spoke to him in a dream, an interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's first dream spoke to Daniel and gave him interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's second dream. God spoke to Daniel and Belshazzar needed to know what was uh, the writing on the wall and what it said. Daniel was in the lion's den. The Lord spoke to him and said, I don't find anything wrong with your life, Daniel, and I'm going to preserve you and protect you. Those who serve God have a two-way communication. Not only what they bring to God, but what God brings to them in response because they serve him. God takes note of our heart, our mind, our motive, our actions, our reactions. He sees. He doesn't look at the outward appearance, as scripture says, but he does look right deep in our heart and he knows whether our heart is toward him, whether our motives are godly motives and righteous, whether what we're doing is appropriate. Uh, a life of continuous service to God will, will cause others to marvel at our commitment and marvel at our faith. If we look at Daniel 6.20, and when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamentating voice, saying to Daniel, Servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? So his question was, am I going to find Daniel dead or alive? Is Daniel's trust and confidence going to be proven worthy? That it was worth the price that he was paying and possibly would pay with his life? Or would God not show up? What a testimony that Daniel says, Fear not, O king, live forever. The Lord, my God, sent an angel, and he shut the lion's mouth, and I have had no harm. What a testimony. If we would allow the Lord to give us a wake-up call in our soul and in our mind, to kind of wake up and be alert, to how we're living our life. 
What if we would examine how we live our life and our devotion to God? What level of devotion would it be? 100%, 90, 80, 70, 50, 40, 10? What percentage would it be? Are we just Sunday Christians? Uh, are we just acting it out in our own home? Or do people know that we love God? and that we fear him and, and love him with all of our heart. A man or woman serving God, a, a child serving God, people will take notice because the Bible says that we're a peculiar people called out of darkness into light, uh, that we are holy and righteous before the Lord. We're not like everybody else. We don't fit in with the crowd. We are a light in the darkness and we are a testimony of truth and love a continuous life of service to god is when you're going to you're going to have evidence of that not only in your perspective of testimony but an evidence is going to come like it did for daniel god's going to show up and show himself strong on behalf of those love him fear him and serve him back to romans 8 28 all things work together for good to them that love god and are the called according to his purpose so we have more than a faith in god more than a knowledge more than a uh, experience of forgiveness mercy and grace we have a heart of service and commitment we live consecrated lives, separated from the things of the world. If we look at six, 16 and 17 of Daniel 6, so the king, king gave a command that they brought Daniel, cast him in the lion's den, but the king spoke, saying to Daniel, your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Do people know that you have that kind of relationship with the Lord? If they don't, we need to make a decision today to work on our commitment so that when we're going through times of difficulty and sorrow, they do not see us destroyed. They do not see us abandon our faith, but they know because of what they've seen in our daily life that now that hardship, tragedy, destruction has come do they have a witness that we believe that our god will come through listen to the words again so the king gave command and brought daniel and cast him into the lion's den but the king spoke as daniel was being cast into the lion's den listen to this your god whom you serve continually he will deliver you when we face those dark hours that are coming, I hope that our testimony is as real and genuine and evident as Daniel's was in the Old Testament days. I'm, I'm sure that that would be your prayer too. Oh God, give me the faith and consecration that people even who are causing me to be placed in harm's way people who don't believe in you will see the evidence that you come through and you do not fail those who put their trust in you. If we look at the two scriptures, 1 Samuel 12, 24, only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart for consider what great things he has done for you. And I would add to that, what great things he is going to do. The best for the believer is just ahead of us. We're headed into some great times forever. Then look again at 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Our God... Jehovah God 
will never fail anyone who serves him, trusts him, and loves him. Make those decisions today. You won't be sorry. God richly bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day.